family members you have? I got 31 family members. That's that's including brothers and sisters. I got so many nieces around right here and nephews and big head little cousins. And how do they, uh, how do the younger cousins stuff feel about, you know, what you say about, you know, bitches and this and drugs and that? And I, I think they agree with me because, you know, they daddy's players. They mama's body. They explain the game until they see it. They grow we. We don't, we don't hide nothing from our kids, man. We don't hide nothing from our kids. They they are, they know what's going on, you know what I'm saying? You hide from your kids, they go to hiding it from you. You hear about the little girls giving birth in the bathroom, throwing a baby in the garbage? That's because their mama didn't explain that they, they wasn't their real mom. Their mama didn't explain that she was adopted. You got to explain to these things. Their mama didn't explain that she had her baby when she was 15. It's all right. They, they hid everything, you know, as to where they, when their mama always taught them, don't wear this up in your ass and do this and do that. And they, well, as soon as their mama leave and they can't go nowhere, they can't use the phone, they can't do this. As soon as their mama leave, they sneak in and watch the porn movies and they jump on the phone and call the boyfriends over. And they start fucking, they start having sex. Then it's bad. Now your mama know you're having sex, so she said, all right, my daughter having sex. So since you want to be grown, you want to be fucking in my house, so you don't go nowhere. I'm going to take your phone, I'm going to take your TV, I'm going to cut your hair. Now she's sneaking a bald head ass out, getting the dick. Don't hide from your daughter. A lot of women jealous of their daughter because they got these little fine. They breed them down here real fine. A lot of women, I think, jealous of their daughter. And and it's to, they jealous of their daughter to the point, point where they talk about anything around their daughter, say anything around their daughter. And their daughter, now their daughter got beef for their mama. Their daughter end up fucking a man in their house. So y'all better check into that, man. No, my mama, no, my mama not real crazy. I mean, my mama real, 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 real crazy, man. That lady is crazy, That's man. That's right. I'm telling you, trust me, man. I'll that, change. <laughs> I, I feel sorry for my own mama. I don't feel sorry for they mama no more. <laughs> she died with me. She had my back through it all, though. She, she got my back. So she probably... You know, my thing about it, she had 11 kids from 10 different men and raised all of them, you know? Half of us ain't shit, ain't never gonna be shit, but, you know, we here, we wasn't raised in foster homes, we wasn't getting away, you know? Wasn't adopted, my aunt ain't raised me and nothing like that. You know, it's like, half, half of us left my mama's house at a young age, and my little sister had five or four, she was 20 years old, but I don't make her no whore and no bitch, not all the time, you know? Let me show you what I feel about hip hop. Here, you know, here, here, like I say, hip hop, hip hop, hip hop. Just a hip hop is a name or something that they gave it. A hip hop supposed to be braids and gold teeth and and cuss words, I guess. But to me, let me tell you what I feel about hip hop. Hit record now, nigga. Eleven months on number one on the chart. No nominee, no award. Shut up. Six months. Three months on the top of the charts, no nominee or no award. So that's why I care about hip hop. As long as they play my shit. And I advise y'all don't buy that dumb shit. Source Awards, I love it when they, they got it down at the Source Awards. It was magnificent. That's the best thing happened to the Source Awards. Because a lot of them nominees and all that other shit was fake. Trust me. I met a lot of real niggas and met a lot of fake niggas at the Source Awards, though. I seen a lot of real niggas. I seen niggas fight. I seen niggas represent their career. I seen niggas get it down. But as far as the people who put that shit together, they the reason why that shit happened. Because they had the shit fucked up. First of all, I didn't make it to the motherfucking stage that I was pissed about that. Because I was with my homeboy Don King backstage. I was explaining to him about this Miami shit. And we never made it out to the stage. So, and, and another reason, the motherfucker kicked me out the back door. These niggas got guns and knives and you can take, send me out there. After you pat me down at the front door, you send me out the back door. What kind of shit is that? I didn't get a fucking award. I didn't get nominated. I, you know, I listened to the old NWA, Straight Outta Compton. Poison's Mentality. Of course, all the Scarface shit. This to the Spice one. Big Mike, Mr. Mike, Twister. Uh, straight, all, all G shit. You know, all G, all straight G shit. From out the door, from the gates when it hit. I like the different shit with the mystical and the twister, the, the different vibe they do, you know, they bring to it. My homeboy, Lil Turk, I like his little game. It's, it's like it's different, but it's a style of his own, you know. And there's a lot of other rappers that's coming out and trying to come out that sound like niggas. If he ain't your twin, don't sound like him, man. I wasn't a twin, trust me. He was one of me. Stop sounding like niggas, please. 
and stop trying. That's one thing. I wrote a record one time dissing Luke on the record, but I, oh, I told him I was going to diss him on the record, though, because I tell you, he tried to play with me, right? And it was better for me to diss him on the record than do something to him because I was on probation at the time. And I, I hear a lot of records now. These niggas, they, they be down with a nigga one day, and the, the Mar he on the record talking about everything about the man and all in the man house. And, man, one of you niggas get on the record, talk about me one more motherfucking time about some flake flaw shit that something you made up trying to sell some record. You get on the record, you tell the truth about me. I probably won't put my hand on you, but. If I hear some fake ass shit you niggas put out by me, I'm gonna slap the dog shit out you. And yeah, mammy better not answer the door wrong. We thug that, we argue, fight, you know, we have our differences, but we all gonna be right back here tomorrow. We was here yesterday, we lose. So it's all good, you know, it's, it's real thug life. Man, I wanna be big Ike. I want all the joy, this nigga, all the diamonds, nigga. I wanted to jag like my old boy shit, man. I want, you know, I wanted real shit. I want about 30, 40 kids. That's what I, I want that type. I picked my son when he was around about six, seven years old at the Scott's Projects. Brought him and tried, you know, let us do something positive. But at the time, I'm a hustling gangster, so the only thing that he can see is hustling gangster and doing it wrong. Because it's the only life that he knew at the time. Because of what his father was doing. You know what I'm saying? So I thought I took him from the projects and have him and his brother Hollywood. That's all they knew was trying to do something positive and, and make money. And how it took, and whatever it takes to get money, that's what they did. And this is what my son understands today. That's why he rapped the way he rapped. That we a thug, and always will be a thug. Because the only thing he knew was being a thug. I even seen some niggas in prison call themselves thugs. They was locked up for murder and, and rape and armed robbery and attempted murder. And these niggas had 25, 30, 30 years in life sentence. And they was yes sir and yes ma'am. I, mean, I had two, three, four, five years at the most. I wasn't doing e motherfucker thing. A thug gonna do what the fuck he want to do, whatever the fuck he want to wear, say what the fuck he want to say, when he want to say it, how he want to say it. And they a player is knowing how to carry his own self. A player is a self-made man. Having something, knowing how to prosper with with what he got. You understand? A player not another man right off another man. You understand? A true player is getting his own woman. You understand what I'm saying? Making himself possible to be successful. You understand? Then everybody's gonna out of you as being a player. But just looking up in the morning, I'm, I'm a player? No, I don't come like that. And for me, my daddy a player. I'm a player's son, so that's self explanatory to him. He inherited it. it was uh, Bill Clinton is my hero because he got some Lulu in the White House. And, and that's what we call head, not Lulu. So when I say Lulu, you know who I'm talking about. And, well, you know, he stuck his dick in Monica Mouth in the White House. And it, it really, it wasn't the guy that. She wanted, she, she was nothing in life. Big, fat, bad body bitch. Ain't nothing. What did she accomplish by saying, all right, I suck Bill Clinton dick? She saved the dress with the calm on the dress. That was the problem. He should have slapped the bitch because she should have swallowed all of it. You sucking the president dick and you let it get on your dress? Come on, bitch. And then you tell somebody? That's embarrassing. Your mama should have told you better. <laughs> now, free thing I did, I stuck a cucumber in the freezer and up in the ice tray. Let it got real cold and just and pushed it in a real slow. And sucked on it for a few minutes, and she just cried and cried. <laughs> Bust all my winners out my car when I seen it again, because I, I ain't called them. My freaking thing. <laughs> uh, that's easy for me. I lick the assholes to the T. Ain't no, I ain't got no shame in my game. You know what I'm saying? I'm the master. I'm a jack of fathers, man. I grew up in the chain game. I jack my dick like two, three times a day. Niggas tell me, oh, I got a purse. I know I'm going to make me a baby. Shit, all my babies in the toilet. I had a lot of niggas come at me and say, damn, my nigga, I had the whole neck in my nigga. I was sucking on the titty, play with the pussy, but my dick working hard. That is a problem. Because I have a problem with my dick just getting hard for nothing. So for you, your dick not to get you have some type of feminine ways or something is wrong. Something ain't meant for you to get this pussy. For a woman who pussy or just get this get dry for no reason, that is too big. All your juices going, you done been beat to death, ain't no nerves in the pussy. That's the only thing I was ever born with, the instinct of being a player, knowing that eating pussy was the right thing. And for women, it, all your pussy is not edible because it's the, the different aromas and 
the different things that have been done to it and a different way it looked. You got to keep it clean. Ain't nothing wrong with dishing and keeping it clean because, trust me, if a nigga say you don't eat pussy, it's because it's a reason for that because all niggas eat pussy. All, my, all your brothers eat. All of them eat pussy. All of them. That's why, we, that's why they call it cut like that, brothers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We cut like Oh, they, they, they said I did something. I ain't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're right. I ain't do nothing. They locked me up for that. So you're right. They, they accused me of selling drugs, trafficking. Well, I, I, I think now I, I thank God for, you know, it's a chance because I use more drugs. I ain't going to get too much time for using drugs, but you need to get caught selling drugs. They, they like stamping iron on the now. It's like they got a 10, 20 life thing with the robbers, so ain't, ain't much for a nigga to do. So, once you commit to this thug life shit, it's like, it's like do or die. There ain't no other choice. There ain't no way around it. Uh, a convicted fella could uh, hold you accountable of him doing something, you know? Because I said, you said that he said it could get you 20 years. So this shit like crazy. And it's, it's like, wow, you know? I grew up as a hustler and a gangster, but I tell any young man, that's not the right, the right way of life now. And I was charged with, as my son said, I didn't do it. Conspiracy to murder and conspiracy with drugs, traffic and sales. Yeah, you had you the wrong man. I was lucky, man. I guess by the grace of God, it was something I just stumbled across. I got in a little trouble at a young age, too, where well, you know, I, I was given another opportunity where if I could act right in a joint, I could do right in the penitentiary there let me out early release. And I messed up and got out on some paper, which is a trick, a probation. That's the trick right there. So I fell in the probation thing and I violated because I was still young and and off the chain at the time. So I, I guess when I get out, I ain't had too much to do. You know, my old boy was locked up at the time. My brother Hollywood had been killed. God bless the dead. Child AK verse 47. Y'all listen to that. You'll know all about that nigga. And it was like, it wasn't nothing else to, you know what I'm saying, to go to. So I heard a little commercial about they was doing some little uh, contest or something at the pack jam. And, I went up there and I won the contest. Then it was another, after I won the contest, they still weren't believing in me. So I go to the next stages to, I got to rap against a lot of other bunch of niggas. So I ain't the type of freestyle. So I guess I had to wrote so much in the joint to, that I couldn't be beat. I had like two, 300 songs. And I, so I guess I ended up winning. I did the Scar record with Luke. And then from there it was, it was like, whatever. You know? I respect Biggie lyrics. Biggie was a lyricist. There's a lot of New York rappers claiming to be lyricists. A lot, a lot of this shit made up. A lot of these shit is the same words, just written different. But Biggie came with different styles, different ideas that other niggas ain't. Ain't too many fat niggas gonna get down like that. Big Pawn, Biggie Small. Big Pawn represented for the, for the oh yeah, y'all know, man. He put it down for Puerto Rico. He put it down for Cuba. He put it down for all on him and man, Fat Joe hooked up. But Pop, I love this nigga, man. I love this nigga right now. Everybody asked me, is Tupac dead? I told you hoes, I ain't no rapper, how the fuck I'ma know if Tupac did? A rapper would know some shit like that. I don't introduce myself as Trick Daddy. I'm Frankie from somewhere motherfucking else. I'm just a real nigga, I'm just a nigga. Don't charge me more cause I'm Trick Daddy, fuck that. I have been Trick Daddy way before rap music. Being rapping ain't sent me to the chain game, man. Thug life did. And my mama was a hair raiser too, so if a nigga tell me they weren't feeling Tupac, they might as well shoot their motherfucking self in their motherfucking head, nigga. That's the best thing for you, suicide. Uh, and I, I, I believe, I, I, we was talking about Eminem, and I believe Eminem. But it, it's natural for all white, white kids have sex with their mothers and, and fathers and dogs and stuff. And for Vanilla Ice, that was a fluke. That shit, that was a fluke. You see, he ain't never do it no more. He, he went from rapping to, first of all, it was a white boy with a rap game with a, with a funny tuxedo-like outfit on with shoulder pads. That's strike one. Then he had a, a old hot top fade with the box and he used to wet his hair. Now when you have Eminem, he, he don't give a fuck. He raped his mom and his son. That what Ed told me. Didn't he rape his mom and his son already? And that's the type of shit. But and it's like when, when I roll a joint or, or say something about faggots or, or about the president or, or about or about the Atlantic Records or about somebody I don't like, they always tell me, no, you shouldn't have said that, they shouldn't do that. And you know magazine people, as soon as I say it, they blow it up. And they make that like the little subtitle of the little article, and they blow it all up, and they blow it out of proportion. But he raped his mama. I seen him on Teen People magazine yesterday in public. I ain't lying. I seen the boy on Teen People. So I, I, ain't, I ain't gonna try to rape my mama now, but I, 
Me and my dad have been trying to think of some real gangster shit to sell these records. I don't know what they do. We we can't rape our mama though. And and with this with this real this rap shit though, it, it's like this shit is real real crazy. Cause you got haters, the haters they they coming, boy. There's a lot of niggas in. There's a lot of niggas in the chain game. When you get ready to go out, they'll try to jam your time up. Uh, if they find out you got ten years less than them, they call you short time and do all type of gay shit. And one of you niggas get on the record. Talk about me one more motherfucking time about some flake flaw shit that something you made up trying to sell some record. You get on the record, you tell the truth about me, I probably won't put my hand on you. But if I hear some fake ass shit you niggas put out about me, I'ma slap the dog shit out you. And yeah, mammy better not answer the door wrong. The boys, my daddy could have used the rubber, but one thing I motherfucking know, I got to go one day. As long as I leave this world, been done, done everything I wanted to do in my life. It don't motherfucking matter, cause hell is on earth. Y'all know that. Hell get no motherfucker worse than this. You see how hot it is. The camera is hitting in that hot ass son. He's beating him in the back of his neck. This shit is crazy. I didn't want for God. I wasn't beating none of this. So God is everywhere. God is everything. So when you dead, yeah, you become. When you die, you become dead. And after you dead for a day, you're a dead person.